How is it going guys? Slippery Jim here. Welcome back to Sky Vaults. And yeah, I'm just hanging out here in my crazy looking armor. <laughs> like um like it's Halloween or something. But uh yeah, this is just uh these are just the armor items I got at the moment. We will be able to change the transmogs on these uh sometime down the track, but uh right now, kind of stuck with what I find. Anyway, in the last episode, I did finally manage to set up some vanilla farms around the place. And as you can see, I've been pretty busy between episodes, uh, building the base and working on it and stuff like that. So I made this central area here for crafting and storage. And uh, we're going to be using these uh, open squares in the sides of these walls for, uh, for drawers. Once we unlock those to set up some storage there. Uh, and I've also been able to put a roof on the base finally. Uh, I haven't extended this all the way down to the very lowest level. Because that's going to take a lot more blocks. But uh, I got most of it done. I think it looks pretty good so far. Obviously we're going to need to extend the floors. These two floors up here. Out to the edges and, and the one below as well and stuff like that. But we are getting there. Um, yeah, and we have pretty much every single crop planted out here in farms now as well, except for kelp, uh, and I don't think you can farm seagrass either, um, this is for when we eventually get chorus fruit on this area here, um, but we've got everything else here, um, the kelp, I am going to set something up for that, um, at some point soon, I'm just not sure exactly where I'm going to put it. Um, maybe over here, maybe, uh, there's another spare area over there I could use. Obviously, I've got these areas in between too. Um, yeah. But we are getting there. This is going to be really good for when we need stuff for the, uh, for crafting the vault crystals and stuff like that. As you can see, I'm also getting a bunch of animals spawning in on these grass areas. So we're getting chickens. I even had, uh, horses. Um, cows have shown up. Uh, what else? I've got a, I've got a squirrel somewhere. We got a sheep over there. Um, yeah, so uh, we are definitely going to grab those guys and set up some animal farms as well. In fact, we might as well do that right now. Um, let's just turn the heads up display back on. So uh, there's actually a, a little mod that is part of the Vault Hunters mod. And you can actually set up some vanilla animal farms um, using these, not, not these jars actually, they look a bit like these jars, but using some animal jars, let's just grab those, do I see some, I'll grab those glass bottles as well, but basically uh, you can set up a vanilla animal farm in just a single block of space, which is pretty awesome, uh, and be able to harvest all the stuff off the animals that you would normally have in a vanilla farm. It's more of a space saver thing than anything else, but uh, what we need is some polished vault stone and some glass. I don't think we'll need too many of these. Let's just make maybe four of these, I guess. Uh, so that's the recipe, your polished vault stone. It's like the, the cork <laughs> and then, the, then glass around the outside there. Um, let's just put the rest of the... Actually, you know what? I'm going to need some glass glass bottles anyway, or, or these, yeah, these little glass bottle things later, so let's just get a few of those, let's get a few of those going. Uh, I did get some extra sand from pulverizing the gravel that I had, or some of the gravel. Okay, so now we have these animal jars. Now, the other thing that you need to set up these farms is some animal pens, which is also polished vault stone and just a few fences. It's actually super cheap to make these, um, but you... I think I might need a little bit of extra polished vault stone. So we'll grab that there, chuck it in the stone cutter, and get some more of that going. So with the animal pens, the recipe is like this, I believe. So we'll get, I don't know, five of these going. For now, put that back in there. And chuck that in there. So yeah, let's go grab some animals. Hopefully uh, we can find two of each of the ones that we have anyway. Because you do need two to breed them. Just like with a regular animal um, farm that you set up in vanilla. 
So what you want to do is shift right click with these jars and you'll see that the animal the animal goes right inside of the jar. It's, it's pretty crazy actually. It's uh it's pretty weird looking. Look at that. <laughs> you see the little sheep sitting in there. But anyway, we want to get two of these and you can only fit one in each jar. So then we got the two sheep that we need. Um, after that, you just want to find an area to slap down your animal pen. We might put it, um, maybe over here. Let's do something like this. And then you can just like right click the jar onto the pen and the sheep will go right in there. <laughs> so you can see we've got one sheep in there at the moment. And uh, sheep obviously breed from wheat. So if we tried to breed this guy right now, it wouldn't do anything because it says you need two to breed. So what you need to do is put the second one in there. Then you got the two sheep in there and you can just breed those straight away to get instantly three sheep. <laughs> <laughs> and it's got a one minute breeding timer on these guys as well before you can breed them again but you can increase them pretty quickly because it's exponential um they're basically instantly adults um and you just have to wait out the breeding timer all right let's see what else we can find so i'm pretty sure there was uh some actually i think i got a couple in between episodes let's have a look here I managed to get some bees, I think it was, because I was harvesting some trees and then bone milling them and stuff like that. Uh, we'll need that elytra later. Okay, we've got uh, two bees, and I got a pig there as well that I just randomly picked up. But um, what I'd really like to get is cows. Rabbits are pretty good. Not as important as they used to be, but still pretty good to get um i don't know if we'll get rabbits though in a plains biome let's get these chickens though get you get you so that's the two chickens we need we need one more pig grab you um now there were some cows and there was even some horses but they might have like lemming themselves off the edge before i finished Closing this off with the glass. I don't know. We can we can actually check the mini map. Uh, so we got a squirrel over there. We got pigs. Two squirrels. That's about it. So okay, there's no cows at the moment, but hopefully they'll spawn in eventually. So yeah, let's just put the bees down and stuff like that. Um, spread them out over here a little bit. I should have made it. I should have made uh, six of them. No, actually, we can do that pretty easy. Otherwise, it's going to drive me crazy having that <laughs> spot empty. Where did I put the uh, the vault stone? We'll definitely fill all of these up as well. You know what else we can do now I think about it is we could probably try to hatch some turtles. Um, I'm pretty sure I've got some turtle eggs. We'll, we'll only need two turtles. And I think you have to place these on sand. So we'll put them over here and hopefully these will, uh, these will hatch at some point. Um, actually, you know what? Oh, I probably don't want to put them right next to the cactuses, actually, because they might get spiked to death when they when they hatch. Um, we'll just put them over here somewhere for now, I guess. Uh, let's see. We'll just... Uh, it's a squirrel right there. We'll put them on top of this. There we go. Looks like they're growing. They got the particles going there. Alrighty. Uh, let's just put uh, these in here. 
Okay, so what else did we have here? We had the, uh, the pigs. Oops. Okay, we got two there. So we're going to need some, uh, some carrots for those guys. Uh, we've got the bees. Two bees. And the chickens. So with these guys, you can you can basically slaughter them for the meat, obviously, and um, it does remove them from existence if you do that, just like it would normally. Uh, you can also use a bucket to collect eggs with chickens. Um, that's about it. Um, you can also use a bucket on cows to get milk and stuff like that, which is pretty cool. So let's break these guys up. Um, I'll grab some carrots as well. And I basically want to keep breeding these until I got a ton of them. Uh, at least the ones that you have to slaughter. The bees, not so much. You only need like maybe 50 bees. Um, you don't need too many of those, but let's breed those guys, breed you up. Um, and then we got the one minute breeding cooldown on those, those dudes as well. Um, now, trying to think, there was something else I was going to do as well. Let's just put the rest of this, oh, well, well maybe we'll hang around and breed them a second time in a second. But, um, yeah, with the bees, by the way, uh, you can use shears to get the honeycomb, a bottle, glass bottle like this to get the honey once it's in there. Like you can see right now, there's a honey level of one. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool, compact sort of way of farming these passive passive mobs. I really like it. Definitely saves space. And apparently the main reason they put this in the mod was to reduce lag from uh, vanilla farms. So you can see we've got six sheep already. Uh, actually, that's what I was going to do is I was going to get flowers for the... Uh, for the bee breeding. There we go. I think I already bred the uh, the pig. Anyway, I'll keep breeding those uh, when I've got, you know, little moments here and there. Um, now, the other thing that I want to set up today before we get into the drawers... Um, unlocking storage drawers is I want to set up an ice farm and the reason for that is eventually I will need ice on demand um, for the vault altar but uh, that only really starts being a concern from level 20 onwards we, we will get to level 20 pretty quickly but um, I actually want it for decorative purposes at the moment specifically for this episode so for that reason I do want to go get some get some ice um, or an ice farm set up. Shouldn't be too much of a drama. We're just going to need a bunch of blocks. Um, we're going to need some water. Let's just grab a few of these. I'm not going to need that many buckets, hopefully. Um, we've got the elytra as well. Let's put that on. I'm going to put my armor set. Let's just grab some of these. I don't think I'll need... I, I might actually go with wood as my building material. Because um, that way I'm not going to insta mine it by accident when I'm farming the ice itself. Okay, so what we're going to have to do is we, one step one, we got to find a biome that we can farm the ice in. So that's going to be a snowy biome, an icy biome, something like that. Hopefully, there's one close by. Uh, to to locate one, we're probably going to need to make ourselves. A nature's compass, so we're going to need um, a compass, like so, and we're going to need some logs, and some saplings, um, is it like this? 
So, uh, yeah, basically to locate one, all we have to do is like type in the biome you want to look at. So say we go snow, we can go down, is this snowy beach or whatever. Let's just try this first one here to start with. Okay, this actually, it's actually super close. 120 blocks that way. Now, I've got these glass bottles here because what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to place a block in midair out in the void to start building a platform out from for the, um, the ice farm. And to be able to build a platform in the middle of, the, of basically open space, uh, there is an object we can use to do that. And it is called a cloud in a bottle. So uh, we're going to need these bottles to fill with clouds, essentially. And I think it's around the 195 Y level altitude that we can just scoop the clouds up into these bottles as part of the Quark mod. Um, and then with these clouds in a bottle, once you've got these, you can just left click them to place them temporarily in the air. They do disappear pretty quickly, but while they're there, you can actually place solid blocks um, onto them to attach the blocks to the to the cloud that you place and they can build off that block so um, that is the plan okay let's uh, let's try and find this thing how cool does this look there like I think it's starting to shape up pretty good the next step in the plan here is to get ourselves some clouds in a bottle. So I think it was around the Y195 um, that we can scoop these up. So let's head up to Y95. Actually, we're already way up <laughs> to 260 ish. So we have to come down a little bit. This is a snowy taiga. taiga? I don't know how you say that word, but um, let's just come down about 195. We should be able to scoop up some clouds. There we go. Let's go up again. I want to get as many of these as I can. There we got 20 of them. Beautiful. Okay, now we are in a forest now, which is not great. So, where's our nature's compass? We got to head back this way, I think. There we go. Now I just need to get to that and place, there we go, perfect. All right, <laughs> so the plan now is to get back to that dirt block that I just attached to the uh, to the cloud and be able to put a water bucket on it. So we've, uh, this direction somewhere, there it is. Let's try not to hit it. Rockets are definitely superior to the, uh, to the dash. <laughs> okay, we'll get there eventually. I just have to get the water bucket on it. There we go. And this was actually a brilliant idea that someone mentioned on the Vault Hunters Discord. Because I used to just try and, um, keep placing... I used to just keep trying to place blocks on the, um on the first block until I had a platform big enough to land on but if you just put a water bucket on it it's way 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 easier to uh, actually just stand on that single block up there and go from there if I can uh, actually get on it <laughs> So yeah, we're in Snowy Plains. Beautiful. Now I can't see the base anywhere. Let's take a look at the map here. It's it's over there. This is good. So I could have built pretty close to it. Probably just here would still be Snowy Plains. But I don't want to be right next to the base with the platform that I'm just spawning ice on. Because it's probably going to be a bit of an eyesore. So yeah. <laughs> I think this spot will be just fine. Um... Okay, we can pick up the water, get rid of that, Let's just get organized here. Alrighty, so we're ready to go. Now, I want to just uh, kind of figure out uh, and be 100% sure before I build the whole thing that um, 
that we're going to have the whole area inside of the correct biome. So I'm just going to measure out an area, probably about 45 by 45, I reckon. Um, and uh, we'll go from there. So, yeah, I'm going to, like, I'm going to hope that this will be fine as the central platform. So we'll build, we'll build a kind of a central area here doesn't need to be too big i might just make it big enough to put a couple of chests in some stuff like that okay i've just double checked and it looks like the whole area here that we're going to need for the ice farm that i've got in mind is going to be all within the snowy plains biome which is what we want and we've got this little uh mini infinite ice generator here <laughs> as well i don't know how well that's going to go with the uh with this light source being here, I can always get rid of that actually. It's probably not even necessary, but um, we'll leave it there for the time being. I'll just cover it up with this. So now it's just a matter of building this this thing out um, with the blocks that I've got. So we're gonna basically be trying to use the jungle slabs. We're gonna need full blocks though for the edges, just because of the way that the ice, you know, the way that ice actually works. <laughs> but, uh, and we'll grab some water out of here as well. Okay, so I got to, I guess I'm I'm gonna have to start start building here. Okay, so I've built out four square platforms, so these are going to get filled with water and I've got slabs through the middle here so that those, that diagonal row of water um, blocks is not going to turn into ice, um, but the rest of it should and uh, then we'll be able to farm the ice. So uh, what we've got to do now is basically place all of the water um, which is going to take a while, but uh, yeah, let's get started on that. Well, guys, the ice farm is pretty much finished. All I've got to do now is uh, stand here and uh, wait for the ice to form, and then we can harvest it, and we'll see how much we get from a single harvest from this thing. We're going to chill here literally for a little while and uh when it's all formed we'll go through with our silk touch pickaxe and grab all the ice see you guys soon okay i waited about half an hour guys and uh we've got pretty much all of the ice formed now um there's a few little patches here and there where the ice hasn't formed but i think it's enough for a test this particular platform has all of the ice blocks ready to harvest so let's see how many ice blocks we get out of this one Okay, I think that's all of the blocks that we harvested. So we got quite a lot. I don't know if I picked them all up or not, but there's already new ice forming over here, which is pretty cool. And it looks like the water flowed all, all the way out to the edges here, which is what we want. Nice. So yeah, let's check it out. We got... Five stacks of ice and then an extra 23 after that so uh i believe to make packed ice we need let's have a look here so that would give us 38 packed ice and it would give us 
four blue ice if you wanted to turn it into blue ice. So times that by four for the total for the total ice farm here when all of these are, um, are harvested at once. Obviously the downside is it's pretty slow. Like you have to sit here for, uh, for literally half an hour um, before the ice will fully fully form. Um, but I guess it is definitely one solid way of making sure you can get ice whenever you want it kind of thing. Later on there's some mods that we can take out that will allow us to basically just produce ice with machines and stuff like that. Um, but this will have to do for the time being. Okay, well that is pretty much the ice farm completed guys. Um, pretty cool. So it's not that far away from the main base. The main base is just literally over here. So I don't know how many chunks that is. Uh, not that many, maybe 10. 10 to 12 chunks away. Um, we'll head back to base. I'm going to come back and just put some fencing around the outside of this as well to stop the hostile mobs being able to spawn on the edge of the farm. It's probably going to make it a little bit safer for me as well. Uh, and then we'll be ready to move on to maybe running a vault before we unlock the uh, storage drawers mod. So uh, we'll leave the rest of the stuff here. I might even leave. Actually, we'll repair that. On the, when we get back and then we'll come back here so uh, let's grab our fireworks rockets out of here and we have to head east to get back which is this way Alright, I've got all the gear I need to go into the vault, I'm pretty sure, so uh, I think it's time to head into the vault again, guys. <laughs> Before we do, though, I might sleep on my awesome-looking velvet bed, and we're also going to have to craft up the vault crystal, so let's whack a vault rock on here and see what we have to provide. We've got one gold, one poison potato, wow. That is kind of rare. Three andesite and 24 snowballs. Now, I think I converted all my snowballs into snow blocks. So let's just uh, do this. Um, probably not a good idea to use the hammer. <laughs> I'll destroy my base. Um, where's my shovel? Make sure it doesn't have silk touch on it here. And yep, yeah, that's definitely enough. Okay, that should be everything. Completed. And we've got some snowballs left over here. Let's just chuck these uh, in here for now. Hopefully I can remember that they are in there. As you can see, I do have some items that will roll when we get back from this vault. Uh, so let's just craft up the vault crystal. And I've got my Xenium key as well. We're going to look out for uh, a Xenium treasure door. It would be really awesome to find one. Um, let's see if there's anything else good here. We've already got a bounty, which is to gather elixir. So I kind of have to hope that's, that it is an elixir objective. Um, we'll see what happens with that. Okay, let's head on into the vault. And hopefully we get some good loot here. Alright, we do have an elixir vault, and even better, we've got sand. Sand is something that I'm kind of short on at the moment, so I definitely want to get a ton of this stuff while we've got the opportunity. Because, believe it or not, it is incredibly hard to get sand in the resource vaults um, normally. Like, you can find maybe three or four blocks of it in some areas, if you find certain rare rooms, but that's about it. So, uh... Yeah, and uh, I mean you can pulverize gravel to get sand, and gravel is pretty easy to get. Let's uh, move on through here. So we have uh, a node, node stone, lodestone, whatever they're called, in the very first room here. Let's see what else we've got down here. Let's just jump down in here. 
Okay, so wooden chests. Might as well hit these up. So, uh, oh, we got, okay, we got creepers to look out for in this one. Don't blow up. Now, um, let's turn the magnet back on. Might be a good idea. Now that I'm uh, level 15, we should start getting uh, skeletons with bows as well. So it's going to get a lot more dangerous. Like, the higher level you get, the, the more dangerous types of enemies you, you start getting. Um, okay, let's get this ore. Now, um, yeah, we just have to beat this objective to get the, the bounty done. Which is fairly straightforward, but as long as I don't get killed by something. Um... At least we don't have to look around for monoliths all the time. Man, there's nothing else down here. Just those two POIs. That's kind of strange. Just going to double check that I didn't miss a treasure door anywhere here. Okay. Um, unless there's one on this level somewhere. We'll have a look up top as well. So, okay. Oh, there is a treasure door here. What? What's this one? Oh, it's Xenium! It's a Xenium door! Oh my god. Alright, let's just deal with the, uh, the monsters. I thought I spawned skeletons somewhere up here. Uh, we'll hit up, hit up these uh, living chests anyway. Man, just as well I checked. That's so lucky. Um, what do we get over there? I don't actually see that many chests. I think we'll give that one a pass. And that's just coins, which I don't care about. We've already got nearly half the uh, elixir. Alright. There's a skeleton wandering around somewhere. Okay, let's just kill these guys, because there's a, there's a creeper over here as well. Where'd you guys come from? Over here, by the looks of it. Probably should have vein mine those, but never mind. That was a trap unlock right there. Um, I don't know what my trap disarm chance is. 11%, that's pretty decent actually. Okay, guys, we're going to open a treasure room for the first time here. Let's, uh, let's try it out. I have to get out my key. Let's just seal up as well. Uh, I don't think that there's any... Hostile mobs or any mobs at all in these, but uh, it's good to get my health back up to max. All right, let's grab the Xenium key. Pretty sure it has to be, yeah, it has to be, uh, I have to be holding it, I think, to actually open that up. Here we go. Bam. I should get a ton of XP for this as well. I'm definitely getting some of these, these special treasure room banners. Grab some of these bad boys. So, in this room, all of this, uh, a lot of this sand is, uh, is treasure sand. So you can actually mine this and it will give you loot. Like, really good loot as well. Which is pretty cool. Um, let's grab the rest of these banners, just because we can. So yeah, this is basically it. There's just one little room here with a single treasure chest in it. Um... Which is pretty awesome. And uh, hopefully we get some really amazing loot. These treasure rooms can have some unique loot in them as well. Um, so they are definitely worth checking out if you have the opportunity. Alright, let's have a look here. Okay, we got a knowledge star just straight up. We got a relic fragment. Uh, a infused vault catalyst. Coin stacks. Interesting. Okay. What else do we get here? Seven vault diamonds. Some moats here. Dreamstone. So a lot of this stuff is like higher level stuff too. Like this is 20 plus, uh, level 20 plus chest you usually get these in. We got an opportunistic focus, which resets the crafting potential, which is awesome. Some other focuses here that are pretty high level. Implicit, reforging, repair slots. Uh, so a perfect jewel here. What else have we got? 
Some of these are pretty big though. Um, let's see if there's anything sensational. Hmm, these aren't the best. This is a pretty good jewel with wooden affinity and soulbound on it, but the rest aren't that fantastic. But we got some rare vault idols here, a chest plate, some other stuff. Um, not not too bad, not too bad. I don't think we can actually mine this chest, by the way, so we'll just uh, spit this out and pick up the stuff we can. But that's not all the loot in this vault. It's got to be. It's got to be said um, there's also the treasure sand to mine so we'll just stick uh stick these items in here like a so and uh actually what level do we get these at blank seals level zero plus completion crates treasure chests okay okay so it's mainly completion crates so i don't have to add that to the whitelist at the moment it's a shame we can't, uh, oh, that's got an interesting interior, look at that. I never noticed that. Hmm, pretty cool. Alright, so now we're going to get all the sand out of here. See what we get out of this. Uh, you know what, did I bring, no, okay. We just go, so, so we're already getting some, some diamonds down here. We got some, uh, some gems. More diamonds. Lots of diamonds, lots of gems. This is good. Again, some pog gems here. Quite a lot of them, actually. And that's about it, I think. I think that's just wool there. <laughs> okay, and we also got an old note. Uh... Imagine the ringing in the ears of my foes if I managed to block ten times in a row inside a vault. Okay. I think what these do is they tell you, like, um, secret ways to unlock special transmogs. Um, but blocking is just based on RNG. Um, because it's a 10% chance to block so you would have to get insanely lucky to get that but uh, cool at least we know how to do it <laughs> i suppose um that's pretty cool and we would have got some other stuff in here too like with the, with those gems we'll check that out at the end of the vault all right so that's about it for the treasure treasure room that's pretty sweet dude that's so lucky that we found that okay so we will move on and we were heading north i believe Let's go. This new sword's not too bad. Uh oh, we've got two creepers down here. Oh, so scary. Okay. Oh my god, the trap chests. What is going on? Why am I getting so many trap chests? These guys give a fair bit of elixir, though. You can't get the negative, um... Um... Modifiers on vaults anymore, unless you make a uh, architect vault. Um, they're only ever going to be positive modifiers. Um... Although, arguably, one of the modifiers could be considered negative, because it gives you more champion mobs but i mean that's just more loot basically unless you get killed by them but you used to be able to i uh, used to have a chance of getting trap chests increased ch uh, amount of trap chests as a modifier um okay anyway uh was there a poi back here let's have a look yep all right um let's just uh plug that up Okay, I definitely want, don't want my loot getting burned up. This is why I need a better magnet to suck the loot out of those sort of hard to get to areas. Okay, let's keep moving on, I guess. 
Get back up top. We've already got all of the uh, elixir that we needed for the for the uh, objective, so um, we can just loot freely now, which is pretty much what I was doing anyway. Let's be honest. Uh, let's have a look up here. Nice. There's a lot of wooden chests here, but I don't mind that because uh, they have a lot of extremely useful stuff in them. Um, like those vault diamonds and stuff like that. We just got a bounty pearl as well, which is really awesome. Because I'm uh, pre pretty sure I was almost out of bounty pearls, if not completely out. <laughs> I go through a lot of them trying to get good bounties. Okay, we just... Okay, somehow I avoided getting poison there. Okay, we might push on because I'd, I'd really like to find... Um, let's just jump down here. I'd really like to find a, uh, a mega room or a puzzle room or something like that. So we'll keep going through here. Okay. We've got... Alright. Gilded. Gilded chest. Not too bad, not too bad. Very nice. There's a there's a lodestone right here. Um I might even reset my compass to this. Just in case we need it. Yeah, there is a bit of ore down there. This sword's not too bad. This is my new sword I'm trying out. It's pretty good. It doesn't ch it doesn't chain as many times as my old one, but it's it's pretty strong like damage wise. Just grab these. Eight minutes left. A couple of coins there. Um, what do we have back here? These are wooden chests. Oh my god! Oh wow, that gave me a scare. I don't know where that creeper came from. That could have been extremely bad. Um, oh yeah, I was gonna hit up the uh, the ore POI, wasn't it? Let's go down here. Grab that. Almost feels like the trap, those trap chests are spawning in the creepers along with the fighters, but I don't think that's a thing, so. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Where was that ore POI? Oh! That was close. Here it is. Okay, probably should heal up. Beautiful little chunk of ore there. Not too bad. Okay, let's move on. We can always come back here. Now we're, now I've set the, um, the compass to this room. Um, let's see. Is there anything good in one of these side rooms? We, we're running out of time a little bit here. We've still got six minutes, but... Um, if we find a really good Omega room, we're going to need a little bit of time to loot it. What's this one? Refills mana. Okay. Okay, I don't know why there's no, uh, 
monsters in this one, but I'll take it. Oh god. Ashium there. Don't mind getting this extra sand as well. Okay, that's about it there. See what else? This whole cave is going to be ores. Okay, what else do we have? This one back here looks pretty juicy. Keep an eye out for creepers. I'm always worried they're going to spawn behind me and blow up before I can do anything about it. The worst ones are the ones that fall from the ceiling though. Okay, we've got a minute 20 left. Let's get the uh, Kiwis ready to go here. Alright, one more or POI would be pretty nice if we could find a decent one. But that might be just about it actually. Oh no, here we go. Oh god! Okay, didn't go, didn't go as planned. Not much Larimar in these, not that I'm complaining, but Larimar has its uses. That's about it. Alright. Okay, let's uh, head back and try and get get back to the lodestone. Um, there was one in the last room, I think. If I can find my way out of here. It was downstairs, I believe. Was it this room that it was in? Yeah, I think it was this room. Here we go. Bam. Cool. That is completed. Nice one. <laughs> Fortunately, you can't take damage once you've uh, hit that lodestone. And it looks like we might have leveled up to the next level here. Very good. 58 chests. Not that many really, but um, we did get a few ore there and we got some really good loot from the treasure room as well, which is sweet. So let's just chuck out that. I think we got our completion crate there, so that's nice. Let's uh, head on down and uh, we will check out the loot. Welcome back guys, so I've organized all the loot into these two chests over here. We've also got our bounty crate and our elixir crate to crack open and see what we got. We will check that out in a second, however I did just notice something on the mini map. Uh, we actually have four cows that have spawned in which is pretty awesome because it means I can grab those in some animal jars and uh, we can add to our ever-growing collection of... Uh, animals in the animal pens at the moment so i can see one over here already let's grab this guy and you uh there's another one over here and we'll leave the other guy over there roaming around in the tree farm so uh yeah let's check these out as well looks like these are slowly hatching the uh the turtles and we'll plonk the cows down next to the chickens here I guess there we go 
Did that use up one of my jars? That's interesting. Um, we might as well breed up the animals while I'm over here. So uh, let's breed the cows there. We should have four cows. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, I guess it was an odd number. Right? The chickens, bees, pigs, and the sheep. Nice. All right, let's get back to what we were talking about. So the uh, the loot situation. All right. So we'll start by cracking open the bounty uh, crate there. We got a vault helmet, orb of regret, some silver, a repair core, and uh, that's about it. So repair cores, uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, what you use to repair the vault armor, weapons, and tools. So they have a certain number of slots depending on the level and quality of the item. Um, so you can see the Omega chest plate on this one, level 10. It's got four repair slots. So you can repair it to max four times before you can no longer repair it. And these are what you use, repair cores. So you can craft these. They are pretty expensive to craft though, especially early on. But uh, we've got one repair core there uh, for when we need it, which is pretty cool. We might as well open the elixir crate as well and see what we get. So we got a sweet kiwi there. What else did we get? Um, a bounty pearl. We got a blank seal. We got one mystery box. Um, and we also got some motes of clarity. A few jewels here. Let's see if there's anything good. Uh, that's not too bad of a wood affinity. Living affinity is not bad. Um, that's about it really. A little bit of um gold there as well let's chuck that in there and we got some rare plus boots which might might be good okay now as far as the rest of the loot so we got this chest here which has got a lot of the junkier stuff in it uh, we did get some common plus leggings there as well um, these are the jewels that we looked at earlier from the treasure room so a couple of these are not bad like this one here size 13 wood affinity with a soul bound on it and pretty good shoveling some other sort of all right ones there um but the main loot is in this one and here we've got our knowledge star from the treasure room as well uh, a couple of chest scrolls there we can use those to craft the vault chests if we want to um the old note there a couple of bounty pearls some more vault bronze and silver um and some booster packs there what else did we get uh, unidentified relic fragment, uh, the catalyst, um, some other stuff here, 22 volt diamonds are not bad, um, a bunch of gems too, a lot of the pog gems which is pretty cool, some netherite etc and we've also got these other vault items that we can roll in a second and that is about it, um, let's just put these in here these in here and I will say from the end of the last episode I had these vault items to roll as well including the Omega Magnet which I am super excited about because I really need a better magnet than the one I've got at the moment that is for sure so let's uh, just roll these to start with see if we get anything out of the relic boosters no no surprise there mystery box we got a single Larama gem okay and our relic fragment we got the minor relic fragment let's put that in there okay so we have our knowledge star there which we'll get to a little bit later as well let's just put that in there okay so that just leaves all of the Volkir to roll so we'll go through this and i'm just going to roll all of this and uh then we'll leave the magnet there to last so we'll check it all out see if we get anything good out of these okay let's see what we got here so we got some uh common leggings which aren't that great let's move on here straight away we got some scrappy stuff here um some rare boots which actually don't look too bad they do have plus two health seven armor item quantity hmm 
Those aren't bad, like particularly from the armor point of view. We'll put those down here in the possibly keep pile. Uh, we also have a chest plate here which has seven armor total, durability, but no health on it. I do like to have health on my chest plates. Um, vault helmet there with seven armor. Nothing else super special. What else do we get? These couple of idols that we got, we got um, Trap Disarm Chance, that's not too bad. And another Trap Disarm Chance with Slowness Avoidance, Poison Avoidance. Hmm. Interesting, interesting stuff. Yeah, I, I liked it when they had immunities, but now it's like debatable as to whether it's even worth using idols, to be honest. Uh, okay. We also have some boots here with 7 armor, plus 2 health. Um, those aren't too bad. Item quantity. Hmm. I think I already looked at those, didn't I? <laughs> Did I already look at those? Uh, an epic shield with 8 thorns damage, 3% block chance, soul chance, chilling cloud when hit. Knock back resist. I mean, I guess that's not too bad, right? The thorns damage is pretty good. We might we might look at using that one. Um, okay, we also got a rare chest plate there. Uh, a sword with soul chance on dead damage. That's just straight up attack damage. So that might be good for use around the base. Uh, we got a scrappy axe, which is, yeah, whatever. Um, okay, what else did we get? A vault helmet. Five armor. I don't think that's better than what I've got, though. Then some boots there. Those are not going to be better either, so... And the magnet has... Um, 4.9 range, 6 velocity, mining speed. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, nothing, nothing to set the world on fire there, unfortunately. I think these boots I will, I will actually use, though. But everything else, not so much. Uh, well, the shield as well. These two, these two will keep, or we'll actually use. Uh, okay, let's uh, let's do the big one now. The uh, the magnet, the Omega Magnet. Please give me something good. Come on, range. I need range. We got eight point four range, ten velocity, rarity, quantity, and copiously. That is actually really really good. I'm happy with that. That is actually pretty awesome. So I'll put away the rest of this stuff here. We'll just chuck it in here for now, and I'm going to enchant these, um, and then we'll be able to uh, move on to unlocking our knowledge um, star in a second here. So we'll just put our breaking on that. Anyway, okay, let's get uh, let's get on to the what we were looking at next, and that is going to be unlocking another mod with our free knowledge star we got from the treasure room. Uh, so let's just consume this. We also have the skill point to spend. Um, let's just take a look at the uh, skill point, I guess, real quick. Uh, we might put that into haste. Another level of haste, why not? So, with our knowledge star, what we are going to unlock is storage drawers. Bam. So, as it says, this mod can store multiple or thousands of stacks of one item in a single block, and drawers can be chained together to create an array of storage. Uh, it also puts rewards in the mod boxes that you can get later on. So, this is a really, really awesome storage solution that we can use like throughout the rest of the playthrough, but it's not going to be the final level of our storage um, system. We are going to go into, I think, Applied Energistics 2 at some point um, as well, and maybe even Colossal Chests. We'll see what happens. 
But for now, this is going to um, alleviate some of the clutter with these boxes. Um, and we're going to fit a lot more into a lot less space. <laughs> so I should have everything I need for the basic setup here. So let's take a look at what we're going to need for um, setting up a storage drawer system. So if we look at the drawers, we will need to make some very basic drawers to start with. So, uh, you know, this is basically the recipe here. You need some chromatic iron, you need some logs, and you need some driftwood. I have tons of driftwood at the moment, so that should be pretty straightforward. Um, we'll grab some sticks out of there as well, because we might need those shortly. Um, we'll grab some logs there, um, and we needed chromatic, uh, chromatic iron ingots. Grab these. Okay, so that will allow us to make your basic... Oh, no, we need the driftwood. <laughs> I nearly forgot about the driftwood. Let's grab some of that there. Um, so we should be able to make a basic... Uh, a basic um, storage drawer here. Like this. And uh, you, need, you need these to make the... Um, the other types of drawers as well. So it's pretty important that you make a drawer controller um, and this requires a POG which is one of each of the different player gems in the mod pack which gives us a POG but I already have a POG I'm pretty sure I've got a few of these actually that we got um, just through loot. So um, let's make the draw controller so this does require black chromatic steel which is very very expensive it requires two drawers of any type as well and two extraordinary larimar so we will make some extra drawers here let's just get a couple of these going and we're gonna need for the black chromatic iron um to craft that what you need is, uh, let's see, draw controller. You basically need eight chromatic steel ingots with a perfect black opal in the middle, which is four, um, four black opals. So to make the, um, the draw controller, we're going to need four of these, which is um, 32 black opals if I'm not mistaken I don't know if I've got that much uh, let's just take a quick look here I know I had these four okay we should be alright and I've got a bunch of chromatic steel ingots here I'm not sure if that's uh, it'll probably be enough let's let's see what happens here so that should be our draw controller completed bam <laughs> very cool all right, let's put these back in there. Okay, so that gives us our draw controller. So um, I think we'll put this like uh, here. Now, before we place it down, we can actually customize how this thing looks as well. So because I've got the deep slate slabs as the flooring here, let's just see... probably going to be the, this type of block that we need and um, so you can have one color for the outside of the um, the drawers or the drawer controller and another color for the face of it and this is why I wanted to get some ice because I really like the way that packed ice looks as the face of the controller so you can sort of get a preview of this but to be able to customize the color of this you need to make it into a framed um, a frame drawer or drawer controller in this case by putting sticks around it so let's grab that out of there and then that allows us to customize the um, the way that it looks so let's see have I screwed this up no there we go okay <laughs> that looks pretty interesting too actually um, I don't know if I can customize the face of the controller but we can definitely customize the exterior of it um oh there we go that's what i wanted just like that cool so plug that down there 
Now, these do have a certain range um, that that you can place the drawers that they control um, away from them and still be able to control them, if that makes sense. Um, I think it's around the 12 blocks, something like that, um, around, the, around the controller. So we should have no problems if we put the, um, the compacting drawers in these, in these uh, areas here that I've left open. Um, cool. Alrighty. So another thing that is very important that we're going to need is a key. So there's three different kinds of keys. There's the draw key, which allows you to lock the drawers. Um, and there's the quantify key, which shows the quantity labels. And then there's the the concealment key, to be honest, I don't think the concealment key is very useful at all, but these two are definitely kind of important. Um, and we to make the quantify key, you need the regular key um, and a book and quill. Now, unfortunately, I do not have any ink sacks, so I can't actually make the book and quill at the moment, but we might look at that in the next episode and maybe getting a basic squid farm happening. But we will make a draw key. So for a draw key, we need the upgrade template and we need another another draw there. So for the upgrade template, it also requires a set of drawers. <laughs> Let's grab some of those. And that should give us our draw key. So yeah, that's all we'll need for the time being to get it set up. Um, but after, you know, after we, after we get a few more resources, we'll be able to get the other key going as well and um craft some upgrades and stuff like that so the upgrades you can get are storage upgrades so they fit more items uh, you can also get a, a void upgrade as well which lets you void any excess items that that go over the item limit that the drawer has in it um and there's some other upgrades here as well um which are kind of interesting i've not really played around with these too much this is kind of interesting the illumination upgrade <laughs> yeah we might play around with those at some point but anyway we have our key we have our controller but we don't have any actual drawers at the moment so let's get some of those made up now what i think i'll start off with um each one of these can hold a four by three or 12 storage drawers in each one of these um Let's go with uh, let's go with twelve for the time being, if we can make that many. And what I might make to start with is we might actually make. Let's see. I might go with. We've got one, two, three, four. We could actually do eight two by two drawers. And then four compacting drawers, if I can afford that. We'll see what happens. And we'll frame these as well. So that gives us four framed compacting drawers. And we've got our eight framed 2x2 two two drawers as well. Now there is some other stuff we're going to need to actually connect these up. Um, we're going to need what's called trim. So what trim allows you to do is it basically will connect the um, drawer controller um, with the drawers. Um, so if you were to put a drawer right next to the, um, the drawer controller, it would connect automatically to anything touching it. But the trim basically serves the same purpose so we could turn these into trim blocks all the way along here and then connect them up and also if you wanted to go around corners like here you could have these as trim blocks connecting to your next set of drawers if that makes sense fortunately those are pretty cheap to make usually um let's put the rest of this it kills me to, to use so much chromatic steel but you gotta do what you gotta do um and we've only really got enough draws to fill out one of these. I am going to want to populate all of these these areas with drawers eventually when I can afford it. Um, okay, well, let's look at the cosmetic, cosmetic side of things first. 
so what I've used here is Deep Slate Bricks and Cracked. Deep, deep Slate Bricks. Hopefully I've got a few of these left over here somewhere. Let's grab these. There's a couple of cracked ones there. And we'll also use the packed ice. Um, which we'll grab out of here. So if we want to... Let's see. Two by twos. Let's put those there. And... One of these I'll make cracked. Like that. And the rest of them will just have like that. And then we'll do like say two of these cracked. And then put the rest of those in there. Cool. So let's set these up. Uh, we'll put the compacting drawers along the bottom here, I think. Cool, now, these should all be connected to the drawer controller, um, which we can actually check by seeing if when we use the draw key on the draw controller, it should lock all of these if they are connected. Now, it doesn't look like they are. So we'll have to um, troubleshoot this a little bit. Now, that is a regular lock that's the problem right there uh these look identical okay in my defense let's try that okay that should now be connected let's try again okay so you can see all of these have keys on them now uh what it does when you lock these is it will lock it to whatever item you put in these so even if they have even if you remove all the items so if you were to put for example um this block into the drawer right there it will only accept that particular block into that particular drawer um, if it is locked even if you were to remove all of these out of here um it would have zero in there which is what it should be right now oops it should have uh zero zero deep slate bricks in here but it's still locked to that now if we were to unlock that you can either unlock it individually like this or you can unlock them all at once over here for any connected drawers um, which is pretty cool so this is connected now eventually i'm going to connect this side over here as well so we're going to go across here um, and do this exactly exactly the same thing to this one here too um we might as well connect that up right now so then any drawers we put in here that are connected to this trim are going to be part of the system just like these ones are but uh yeah for now this should uh, do the job so for instance what we can do is um we can set up all of our pog gems for example nice so those are all the pog gems. I can just look at that to see how many I've got. Now we can't actually tell how many are in there until we get the um, the other key crafted up. Um, but we'll do that in the next episode, I think, the quantify key. And for this, we need the book and the quill. I, I have seen a couple of books and quills in the vaults, but I haven't thought to pick them up because I, I didn't realize I was going to need them. You can also use the concealment key to show or hide the item labels, but this one here is pretty useless, in my opinion. Um, especially if you're playing solo. Like, why would you want to hide the labels? Um, anyway, yeah, basically, um, when we want to put, put these gems in here now, um, there's a couple of ways we can do it. We can either do it directly, like if we were to grab, um, let's have a look here. I pretty much put all of them in there already, didn't I? But if we were to grab, say, some of these Ashium out of here, so now there's zero in there. Um, you can either like just click on this, like that, to put them back in there, or you can also, um, 
You can also just uh, right click on the controller over here and it will go straight in to the drawer up here. But yeah, what I might do between episodes, because it will take me a little while, is I'll set up these drawers. Um, I'll set up as many drawers as I can. Um, and I'll start transferring all of the bulk stuff in there, like, um, you know, some of these blocks that I've got and stuff like that. Some of these junk items. Um, probably the jewels and stuff like that I will leave out. And the vault stuff I'll have to leave out because these, these are not going to work so great with the drawers. But the stuff I have a ton of, like one single item, are going to go into into the these drawers that I'll set up. Anyway, guys, that is where we are going to leave this episode for the time being. I hope you're enjoying this series, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.